Hi, this is Dr. Desmond White. Uh, the question put to me was, uh, in patient with diverticular bleed, when do you advise surgery? It's a very specific question. Diverticulosis is common. They are like outpouching of the colon uh, in elderly people. The older uh, we are, the higher the chance of finding diverticuli or divert. So the divert, when they become, they are outpouching of the colon, when they become very big, they may erode in the artery outside the colon and they can cause bleeding. The bleeding normally stops by itself, but sometimes it can be very serious. Especially in those that are on uh, anticoagulant, uh, like those with atrial fibrillation, or those who have uh, uh, ischemic heart disease on a Plavix or on a, uh, aspirin. So when they such a bleeding, we will ask them to stop the blood thinner and we resuscitate them, give them fluid, give them blood, top of the hemoglobin. If bleeding continues, we do an emergency colonoscopy after a proper bowel prep. Uh, we stop the bleeding and that should be it. So when do we do surgery? Number one, if we fail to stop the bleeding. Usually, we can stop the bleeding most of the time. In the event that we can't stop the bleeding, because there's blood everywhere, we can't find where the exact point. Next step is to call the radiologist to do an angiogram, look at the blood vessel supplying the colon, find out which part of the colon was bleeding, and we, when we put in some chemical or put in some uh, coil to block the artery supplying that part of the colon to stop the bleeding. We're not normally okay. But if the bleeding was so bad that we fail endoscopy, we fail colonoscopy, we fail angiogram, then we have no choice but to send to the surgeon. The prognosis are not good because by the time they reach the surgeon, they must have bleeding non-stop, despite scope and despite uh, angiogram. Patients normally have lost a lot of blood by then, so the post-operative complication can be quite high because they have already lost a lot of blood when they go for surgery. The surgeon will look for which part the colon is, chop it up and, and, uh, and then join together. So in uncontrolled bleeding, we send to the surgeon. Second indication is when the bleeding keeps coming back. If uh, once they have one diverticular bleed, uh, the chance, the risk of re-bleeding in a year time is probably about 10-20%. So I have had patients that almost visit me once a year because, oh, Dr. Why my mother bled again. So we come in, we observe, we do a scope, we stop the bleeding if we can. Sometimes bleeding stops by itself, that's great. So the, uh, if people keep coming back for repeated scope, repeated bleeding, and then we tell the patient, look, uh, this is repeated problem. You want to solve it once and for all is to do an operation uh, to cut out that part of the colon. I personally do not like to send patients for surgery for diverticulosis bleeding because most patients of mine that have severe bleeding are also elderly patients with multiple medical problems. They are often on anticoagulant, anti-platelet. Uh, so such patients when they go for surgery, the risk of the post-operative recovery can be quite difficult, can be stormy. Their recovery is not as easy as someone that comes in for colon cancer, do a colectomy and go home in four to five days time. So I might be hesitant. So to sum up, uh, surgery is an option for people with diverticular bleed, but only when two indications. First, when the bleeding cannot be stopped with scope and with angiogram. Number two, if the bleeding keeps coming back until the patient gets fed up, they want to find a cure, they don't come back once and for all. But most of the time, I don't send them for surgery because the post complication can be high. The recovery after surgery can be stormy in some patients. Hope I answered your question.